let's talk about the recent research we conducted together. It's about the market portfolio William Sharp postulated 50 years ago. Its replication is a problem ever since. He considered it a natural starting point in portfolio construction and theoretically it includes all risky assets in the world based on market cap data. But over decades it remained unclear which assets can be measured, respectively considered. What you, Andrea Vacchino, and I have done over the last two years was to find an alternative proxy for the market portfolio named Global Capital Stock. Gregory, can you highlight why our quest is relevant for the financial community? We both know that indices are driving financial innovation these days. Now, take someone who will define himself as a global index purist. That person will simply buy all outstanding assets in the world. This so-called global market portfolio will be a capitalization weighted average of all financial and non-financial assets in the market. Well, obviously that's impossible because all those assets are not investable or sometimes not even observable. In the past, an obvious first choice was to take a broad equity index, like the S&P 500, for example. But it's far from ideal, first in terms of diversification. If you had invested everything in US stocks in the fourth quarter of 2008, you would have lost 50% of your money only four months later. Now, one better ancestor of a multi-asset portfolio was the so-called balance portfolio which holds fixed proportions of bonds and equities. But nowadays, with increased accessibility to different asset classes worldwide, multi-asset investing becomes mainstream. In Europe alone, more than 14,000 multi-asset funds are offered. But surprisingly, after all these years, the core question remains unanswered. How can one know whether a multi-asset portfolio is worth the investment? I strongly believe that institutional investors still miss a composite portfolio benchmark representing a broad spectrum of investments when they start their multi-asset investment process. Indeed, but what about the data collection issue? As it became easier to source data, especially since the Great Recession, we see some research being conducted on measuring the global asset base like McKinsey 2011 with the coverage of the financial stock, the liquid part of it, or 2015, the paper on the global multi-asset market portfolio in the Financial Analyst Journal. How certain can we be that our measures with our data sources are superior to the others in the field? The study that you mentioned only focuses on investable assets, with the portfolio weights given by the assets under management. Our research takes a broader perspective. For instance, one asset class which comes to mind as underweighted in the current representation of the global market is real estate. Direct real estate investments is the primary asset of most households in the world. A global market portfolio aiming at including the major economic forces would need to take into account this weight accordingly, instead of only accounting for assets under management held by real estate investment trusts. Likewise, the market value of privately held corporations and businesses is likely to exceed the total market value of public equities. If privately held businesses have different risk characteristics than those of traded assets, Investors ought to increase this entrepreneurial risk in their overall portfolio by investing directly or indirectly in privately held companies. Overall, we computed the market value of global financial and then also non-financial assets, implying 11 asset classes, and this for the period 2005-2015. In their search for yield, professional investors began to allocate a significant amount of their assets and management to non-financial assets since 2008. With them becoming globally diversified multi-asset investors, I see our findings being beneficial for them in several areas like monitoring multi-asset managers by continuously benchmarking their holdings against the global capital stock components and then discover appreciated or unrecognized drifts comprehensively understanding the performance attribution of multi-asset strategies or constructing portfolios using the global capital stock as starting point. Indeed, there are multiple applications possible to the benefit of professional investors. Let's elaborate more on the size of the market portfolio and its components. Our proxy for the global market portfolio is estimated to reach 512 trillion US dollars in 2015. Non-financial assets is the biggest component with 210 trillion representing 42% of the aggregated value. The dominant asset class is real estate, with an estimated 100 trillion in 2015, a value similar to the one during the peak of the real estate cycle in 2006. Interestingly, real estate, private businesses, debt securities, and loans to the private sector are almost equally weighted in the portfolio. 
when equity represents a lower share with 13% and cash and cash equivalents only 8%. Now a question I'm sure you were waiting for. What are the limitations of the global cap and stock? Well, of course, our proxy comes with certain assumptions and they may be subject to criticism. In the assets in our universe also do not include alternative assets like art, intellectual property rights or even human capital. But our aim was to offer a global market portfolio for investors, which could be a reasonable starting point or even a benchmark for those willing to diversify away from traditional market portfolios consisting in equity and debt only. And which take into account more precisely the weights of some important economic drivers of the world economies. We think that those are still underestimated in current benchmark portfolios. That's why we propose this new measure. And of course, we will continue our efforts on updating the global capital stock.